Hi everyone. So recently in my update to Selectrix, I promised that I would make a video about what I've been working on recently in Mavis. For those of you who are not aware, Selectrix is my static compile time type checking system for Elixir. And Mavis is, my, uh, is the type inferencing engine that it's going to run on top of. So what I've been working on has been something called literal types. And the motivation for this is that while working on some conditional tests, I ran into some issues that would be super, super easy to deal with if I had this particular type set. And what it amounts to is the fact that dialyzer and the type system the dialyzer uses is insufficiently expressive to express some of the um, types for the terms that you're going to that you're going to encounter while programming in the beams in the beam in beam programming languages like Erlang and Elixir. So let me um, go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. And so first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy paste this function definition into VS Code, and we're going to let it do its thing. So VS Code plugs into Dialyzer and will do type analysis on, on the stuff that you um, provide. And so I just wrote this function foo, which returns 47. And you can see that the type that it predicts that it, it is is the function foo, which outputs the type 47. This is really interesting because um, that's fine. Um, and if I were to do something like this, it would complain. You'll get a little yellow arrow saying, hey, the spec for this function does not match the success typing of the function because, of course, 47, which is the return type of this function, is not an atom. OK, I could also do this, right? This is a little bit overbroad, but it doesn't complain because 47 is indeed an integer, so this, this, um, this, this matches. But what I think is interesting is that when you just let it, let it be, the predicted type is that it's 47. And so in the dialyzer type system, integers are valid literal types. So a, an integer is its own type. However, let's say I were to make this a floating point value. And of course, this is not doesn't match a success type, but what does it recommend? It recommends uh, me to make a float. Well, that's that's interesting. Why can't I just do this? Well, that comes up with an error. It's unexpected expression in type spec 47.0. You're not allowed to have floating points as literal values inside of your dialyzer type system. So we have to do the more general float. Um, another one, another good example of this is, uh, is uh, strings, right? So, or el elixir strings. So if I were to say write a function bar and bar returns the, val the string bar, then it is going to suggest, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, a, a, a bit string of size 24, because that, that is what this is. Um, I personally would have preferred it to do string.t, which is kind of the elixir uh, suggested um, what it infer implies is that this is a, um, a binary that is UTF-8 encoded. Um, that's valid. You can see it doesn't complain when I do that. But even better would be if I could just do this, right? So have it literally be the literal string bar. Um, but we can't. Um, and so we have to stick to something a little bit lesser. Let's do one more. Um, I'm going to do Baz, and Baz is going to output a list. And let's make it a list of foo and bar. And what does Dialyzer suggest for that? It suggests list of bar and foo. Um, and it's also, in this case, it's not empty. That's a correct description of this, but I would much prefer to have something like this, where it is actually the literal value itself and the order is 
uh, the order is preserved uh, in that in in that literal list. So this means that it has to be this one value, and it can be no other value. That's what I want. But I have to settle for something like what was presented before, which is uh, a list of either bar foo uh, that is not empty. Okay, that's fine. Now, it would be nice if we had a system where we could have literal types. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to spin up my Elixir console and import type. Um, oh, right. Uh, need to use the library. Import type. I'm going to clear this for a second. And so I've in the new Mavis system, I've created a macro called literal, which will take a type and then allow you to uh, generate the literal version of it. So for most types like Adams, it's not going to change anything. Um, same with that. And I've actually made it so that representations of lists are their own type. So for most data types, there there actually is a literal. Uh, the, the literal of itself is going to be represented as itself. There are a handful where it's going to be a little bit different. So for example, if I take the literal uh, foo, or let's just make it an OK message, then that's going to actually convert it to a, a type. And so let's uh, inspect that. Uh, inspect. V instructs false. So let's actually decompo decompose that. And you can see this is actually a struct where the elements are themselves uh, types in the, in the um, Mavis type system. But here's what's interesting. I do want to have a shim that allows me to make these uh, Mavis types, which don't exist in um, in uh, in um, in the dialyzer type system work. So I've written a function called normalize, which will take which will take Mavis types and convert them into dialyzer types. So let's uh, do that for uh, a type where it is its own uh, value. That's fine. And then let's also normalize foo, and that we're going to see is going to become a string. And let's normalize um, the literal OK message. Oh, you see that that gives us the uh, expected tuple type. Um, let's also normalize uh, the list bar foo. Or actually, let's let's normalize this list. And so we're going to get back exactly the type that we that that um, that dialyzer produces. So that's that's a good thing. But you know, at this point, it still might seem like I'm just doing this for the sake of doing it. And what I want to show you is that really that if we dig deep into how uh, Elixir and Erlang compiles this module, that this is a really a justifiable choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the object code for, for this module. Um, so this is the, this is the uh, module, the binary, and then the file that it comes from. And then I'm going to disassemble it using the beam disassem module. And so this is the disassembled opcodes for all of the, for this playground function. And so let's see, uh, we have this bar function. And right here is where that bar value gets created. It's this literal bar. And likewise, for the baz function, it's literal foo bar. And for the float, it's float 47, 0. So these values all do exist somewhere at the opcode level. And it would be nice to be able to treat these as if they were their own types and do the expected things. Um, with them and treat them as if they were just singleton types in the type system because that'll make 
a lot of uh, a lot of type checking um, considerably easier, especially as I move down to the case where I have uh, comparisons. So for example, test if these two values are equal, then I can do a direct test. And what this one of the places where this is going to be really useful is if you've ever tried to use Dialyzer to um, introspect the type system for a JSON file, you're out of luck because you can't um, you can't assign anything more granular anything part less granular than kind of a vague binary for for your values and hopefully if this is this entire endeavor of mine is successful you'll be able to do end-to-end -end type checking of um, ingressing json uh, values so um, yeah so as you pass json values around you can type check to make sure that what what that what's con what's contained in that map is correct using the dialyzer or using the mavis type system not just using um other forms of uh, vague um vague contracts okay um hope that was informative um if you i'll put some links to selectrix and mavis below in uh, in the description section and the next thing that i'm going to work on is subtraction types and this is something really powerful that doesn't exist currently in dialyzer it, it doesn't exist in gradualizer and i'm really doing it because it will make um processing and, and, and understanding uh, if statements and conditionals like case and cond a lot easier for me anyways uh, in my in the process of of um of building up this type inferencing system okay Hopefully that uh, gets you up to speed on what I'm working on now, and I will probably release a new version of Mavis sometime in the next couple of weeks, and, uh, and um, then I'll go back to working on inference and fixing all of these conditional tests that I've been struggling with.